Hello everyone. In this video lesson, we will discuss Bernoulli's principle and equation of continuity. We will see both conceptual aspects and application of formulas. Review of important concepts first. The term fluid refers to both liquids and gases, and an ideal fluid is a fluid that is incompressible and non-viscous. A non-viscous fluid is a fluid in which friction between the layers of the liquid is neglected. In Bernoulli's principle is based on the law of conservation of energy. When a fluid is pumped through this section of a pipe, work is done on it, and this work done appears as the change of kinetic energy and potential energy of the fluid as it reaches this section of uh, the pipe. According to Bernoulli's principle, the sum of the pressure, the kinetic energy per unit volume, and the potential energy per unit volume remains constant. So the P, the pressure, plus kinetic energy per unit volume, potential energy per unit volume is constant. You know kinetic energy is half mv squared, and potential energy is mgh. The mass per unit volume, mass per unit volume are both replaced by density, and we write the pressure plus half rho v squared plus rho gh is equal to constant. This term here represents static pressure, the pressure parallel to the flow, and dynamic pressure is a pressure head on to the flow. For the case where rho gh can be neglected, like that of um, a horizontal pipe, for instance, or an aircraft in flight, the pressure, the, the static pressure plus dynamic pressure is equal to total pressure, and that total pressure remains constant. Where the speed is high, the pressure will be low, and when the speed is low, the pressure will be high. According to Bernoulli's principle, fast moving fluids exert less pressure. When this is written for different points, the P1 plus half rho V1 squared plus rho G H1 will be equal to P2 plus half rho V2 squared plus rho G H2. This is known as Bernoulli's equation. Equation of continuity, rate of flow of mass is constant. The rate of flow of mass across this section of the pipe will be the same as the rate of flow of mass across any other cross-section of the pipe. In other words, we say volume flux or flow rate is constant. The flow rate, the volume flux, delta V over delta T is constant. Delta V over delta T is equal to the cross-sectional area of the pipe times the speed at that cross-section. So AV. If you look at the unit AV, the area is given in meters squared, and V is given in meters per second. So this is cubic meter per second, which is just the volume over time. We write A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2 for equation of continuity. Just to apply what we have discussed, let's see some examples. Example 1, a horizontal pipe, 10 cm in diameter, has a smooth reduction to a pipe 5 cm in diameter. If the pressure of water in the larger pipe is 8 times 10 to the power of 4 pascal, and the pressure in the smaller pipe is 6 times 10 to the power of 4 pascal, at what rate does the water flow through the pipe? This is a horizontal pipe. I labeled this as 1 and this as 0.2. Horizontal pipe H1 and H2 are equal. Given these quantities, we calculate area 1 as pi d1 squared over 4, area 2 as pi d2 squared over 4, and writing Bernoulli's equation, with h1 is equal to h2, we have p1 plus half rho v1 squared is equal to p2 plus half rho v2 squared. And rearranging, p1 minus p2 will be half rho v2 squared minus v1 squared. And from equation of continuity, a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2, for we, from which v2 is a1 over a2 times v1. Substituting the given expressions, we, say we get v2 is equal to 4 times v1. And using this value in this expression, half rho 4v1 squared minus v1 squared, 4v1 squared, 16v1 squared minus 1v1 squared is 15v1 squared. Rearranging and solving for v1, you get v1 is equal to 1.63 meters per second. And volume flow rate is therefore delta V over delta T, which is A1 times v1. And this gives uh, 0.013 cubic meter per second. But if you want to calculate the mass flow rate, you just multiply the density by the volume flow rate. Density times volume flow rate will give us 13 kilograms per second. Example, at a certain point in a pipe, 
The velocity of water is 1 meter per second and the pressure is 4 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals. Find the pressure at the second point in the pipe 20 meter below. This point, the second point is 20 meters below uh, the first point and that the cross-sectional area of the second is one half that of the first. These things are given here. We take y1 minus y2 equal to 20 because this point is 20 meters below. So y1 minus y2 is 20 meters. Writing Bernoulli's equation and taking the expression of equation of continuity, we have these things. Solving for v2, a1 over 8 times v1. For a1, we substitute 2 times a1 to get v2 to be 2 meters per second. And substituting the given values here, we get the pressure to be 5.98 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal. Third example is the speed of a flux. Water in an enclosed tank is subjected to a pressure of 4 times 10 to the power of 5 pascals, applied by compressed air here into the top of the tank. There is a small hole inside the tank, 5 meters below the level of water. Calculate the speed with which the water escapes from the hole. The speed with which the water escapes is known as speed of a flux. Writing Bernoulli's equation and Rearranging for V2 and taking the square root of both sides, we get V2 is equal to this expression, V1 squared plus 2 into P1 minus P2 over rho plus 2G Y1 minus Y2. The very important assumptions here, the cross-sectional area of the hole is very small as compared to the area at the top of the tank. And the liquid will drop very slowly as compared to the speed with which it leaves uh, this hole. Let's see, A1 V1 is equal to A2 V2, and from this V1 is equal to A2 over A1 times V2. But with A2 less than A1, then we get V1 less than V2, so we take V1 to be 0. And the pressure P2 is atmospheric pressure, and therefore taking P1 and P2 and Y1 minus Y2 is equal to 5, and using these values in here, we get the speed of FLX will be equal to 26.4 meters per second. Additional note, if the top of the tank that we have seen in the previous example is open, then pressure P1 and pressure P2 will both be equal to atmospheric pressure. And the expression for V2 will be taking P1 and P2 equal, the expression V2 will be equal to the square root of 2GH, and this is known as Torricelli's theorem. Do you remember where we have used V2 is equal to the square root of 2GH in kinematics? It is the speed attained by a freely falling object when it falls through height H. So here the speed of flux is the same as the speed a body would acquire in falling through height H. Example 4. Lift on an airplane. Air streams horizontally past the small airplane's wing such that the speed is 80 meters per second over the top surface and 60 meters per second past the bottom surface. If the airplane has a wing area of 60 meters squared on the top and on the bottom, what is the net vertical force that the air exerts on the airplane? So, solution. This airplane flies, as you can see, the airplane flies. If the wing is oriented such that the speed of air above the wing is greater than the speed below, the pressure below will be greater than the pressure above and the airplane will experience an upward force. And if the wing is oriented such that the speed of air below the wing is greater than the speed above, the pressure below will be less than the pressure above and the airplane will experience a downward force. Looking at this phenomenon in terms of Bernoulli's principle, we write change of pressure is equal to force over area and crisscrossing force is equal to delta P times area. We need to determine the pressure difference delta P from Bernoulli's equation. Taking this P2 to the other side, delta P, P1 minus P2, is half rho V2 squared minus V1 squared plus rho G H2 minus H1. In this expression, we take H1 is equal to H2 because the thickness of the wing is negligible, just like that of a, a horizontal pipe. And the other quantities are given here. And we write in this expression, H2 minus H1 is neglected. 
0, and we get half rho v2 squared minus v1 squared for delta p. Substituting the values, half, 1.2 density of air, 8 squared minus 70 squared, we get the change of pressure to be 900 newtons per meter squared. And therefore, the force is delta P times A, that's 900 newton per meter squared times 60 meters squared, and we get 14,400 newton. So the airplane will exp experience an upward force or dynamic lift of 14,400 newtons. Thank you so much. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share.